Operation Iraqi Freedom. Good to see you, sir. We appreciate you joining yeah, us uh, on a Sunday. You're a freshman uh, here in Congress. I won't make you a answer for the inaction of your colleagues in the past when Republicans had the House. But the House of Representatives has been trying to do something on immigration for years now, and absolutely nothing has gotten done. As David reported, there's four days left, really, of working days uh, to get this done by President Trump's deadline. Doesn't seem like there's much reason for any hope, is there? Well, and I was in the Rose Garden with the president when he announced his immigration plan, and then hours later, Speaker Pelosi said uh, it's dead on arrival. We have had a Congress where Democrats have absolutely stalled on doing anything as it relates to the crisis on the border. Even now, Democrats in the left are saying that we have a crisis on the border. The New York Times just did two editorials saying Congress needs to act because we have a crisis on the border. But I sit on the Immigration Subcommittee on Judiciary. They've done nothing as it relates to fixing this problem. Um, and, and we as Republicans are fighting to do it. We have bills filed, but they're not wanting to move anything oh, but forward. Congressman, it's, all, it's always easy to jo blame the other side. And I understand Speaker Pelosi, they control the majority. They control what moves through. But it's noteworthy that even re when Republicans had the majority in the House, they had the majority in the Senate and they had the White House. The Republicans still couldn't even agree on what they wanted to do with uh, immigration. Yeah, I wasn't in Congress when that happened, but I will tell you that people in my district were upset that when the Republicans had the majority, uh, they weren't able to get that done. And I think I'm certainly going to be fighting to bring the majority back uh, to Republicans in the House. And if we do win the majority in 2020, you will see all of us focus on this immigration issue. Uh, yeah. oh, okay, but if you, okay, so why should anybody have any hope that the second time around, if all of that happens, you have the majority in the House again? Why should they give you the majority if you couldn't get anything done the first time around? Well, one, I think you have a president who's very focused on this issue. And, and he wasn't focused on it. He wasn't focused on it two years ago when he had a Republican House, a Republican Senate. And obviously he had the White House. I, I wasn't there, so I can't speak of okay. what you know he was telling congressional leaders. But I can tell you this. I came into Congress with a very conservative class of leaders from all across the country. And we all feel very strongly about this issue. And do you feel uh, too strongly all... to make a deal? I'm sorry. I said, do you feel too strongly to make a deal? Are you going to Republicans going to demand too much from Democrats? Uh, you know, the president certainly is willing to make a deal. I mean, look at the things that he offered. I mean, he's willing to go a lot farther than probably more conservative members of the House yep. are willing to go to get a deal. You think and that's still, a problem? The Democrats aren't willing to do it. Um, so I, I think with the president's leadership on this, uh, hopefully we can get something done. But all the Democrats are doing is, is stalling and doing nothing on this issue right now, while hundreds of thousands right. of people every month come illegally into our country. Let's get to the issue of Iran right now. You fought in Iraq. You know uh, yeah. firsthand the horrors of war. The president saying, just in that soundbite earlier, that uh, if there's war, Iran is going to be obliterated. Peter Baker writing in the New York Times, Mr. Trump has always been a commander in chief of contradictions. He has adopted a modified version of Theodore Roosevelt's maxim when it comes to overseas military threats. Speak loudly and carry a small stick or carry a big stick, but wave it around without actually using it much. Fair criticism? Well, coming from my perspective, 600 of my brothers and sisters in arms yeah. were killed by Iranian IEDs in Iraq during uh, the time of our service members there. So this is something that's very important to me. Um, the president has said numerous occasions that he does not want war. Um, and I think his policies are correct. Putting these sanctions in place, but is we as a country that, is, cannot... Has, has that emboldened the Ayatollahs, the people who killed your 600 comrades? No, I, I think he's doing exactly what needs to be, ha to, to be happening. We cannot, as a country, allow Iran to obtain nuclear capabilities or a nuclear weapon. It would be devastating for Israel, and it would be devastating for yeah. our allies in the region, region. And also, we can't allow them to be state sponsors of terror. Um, some of the money so that you, so went into Real that, quick, Congressman, I only got 15 seconds. Do you think the president's being tough enough? It's not time yet for kinetic action. I think he's taking the time he needs to, to make sure okay. that the battlefield is what it is and making the right decision and not rushing into anything. Fair enough. Uh, Congressman, we appreciate it. We appreciate your service. First time here Thank you. Uh, with us, and you're welcome back anytime, sir. Enjoy the rest of the days uh, down in Florida before you come back to work. You too. Good to see you, sir.